Good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. We are back at North Course here at Evisu. It is actually quite chilly, which is awesome. There's a fair few other people here. There's like a Hachiroku and a A86 on track, a couple skylines up there. Oh, here we go. We got someone coming in now. S14. Folky. Super cool. Uh, Fusto's going to be joining us in a little bit, but I'm going to get some seat time in. He's at A86. Nothing like a good forage on song. Uh, yeah, so Fusto's going to join us in a little bit. He's just doing some stuff down at the shop, but for now, we're going to get some seat time in, have some fun. As you can see from yesterday, um, we got everything remounted and stuff last night and everything back to normal, so it should be good. Let's head out. Have a bit of fun. Let's start this puppy up though. Let you guys listen to that one Jay-Z. Woo! Ready for partying. First couple laps went pretty well, but uh, I had a can of coffee here to celebrate and do an ASMR coffee time, but it had gone cold in the time that I was out doing some sick laps. So, practical use number two I've now found for the JZX100, uh, instant coffee warmer. Just set that thing on the back of your turbo for a few minutes and then she'll be ready. So next clip should be doing ASMR coffee time. We get to christen this thing, pour some coffee all over the interior somewhere. I don't know, we'll figure it out, but you guys know that's how we christen cars on our channel. I think it's time, lads. Yeah, some for her. She's christened now. <sighs> some for me. I hope that doesn't get in my coil packs and cause any <laughs> misfires. It's official. It's a Semit car now. We've spilled coffee on her. Oh, the drift taxi's out right now. Such a cool thing. If you guys don't know, if uh, if you're coming to Japan and um, you want to experience drifting here at Ebisu Circuit. Um, the guys at Team Orange run this thing called the Drift Taxi and you can literally pay, come here and they drive you around every circuit and let you experience all the tracks of Japan. It's pretty cool. So if you guys ever want to do that, definitely uh, jump on. I think it's called like Drift, Drift Ebisu or something like that. If you Google Drift Taxi at Ebisu Circuit, you'll find it. That's a pretty big beater. Hey. Go for round two.
So I was just out here vibing and uh, I was driving, not like, I was probably like six car lengths behind this guy and unfortunately he's spun out and uh, we're just getting a toe strap and I'm gonna pull him out, but use number three for the chaser. Not only is it a good drift car, not only is it a good coffee warmer, but we're also gonna save and tow another car out. So he's really bogged in deep, so we're gonna just pull him out with a strap. I think I'm gonna start my own towing company with this thing because uh, we got that thing out with a breeze. So up until now, I've been really enjoying driving the car and I haven't really wanted anything more out of it. Um, and that is until now. So I'm obviously a lot more used to the chassis now. I wanna start sending it a bit harder. And uh, I started playing around a little bit with tire pressure and noticed that if I'm not running like a, like at least like nearly, you know, 38, 40 PSI in the rear, I'm struggling to clutch kick third gear coming up the hill. And that's me like really trying to go all out and send it. So I started looking at the boost because I'm like, man, it just feels like this thing needs a little bit more power. Now I thought this thing had already one bar set, but it turned out that when we disconnected the battery, Battery, the boost controller wiped itself and this thing's been running at stock boost the entire time I've had this car at the circuit. Uh, yesterday and everything, I was going through the footage on my laptop and I'm like, yeah, legit, like I never even noticed that on the boost controller it was saying we we're only running 0.7, which is stock boost, uh, just running off the actuator. So I configured the boost controller and now I have, I set it a little bit down because I don't want to wear out the turbo fast or anything. So I'm, I'm running it like 0.95. This thing is an entirely different car now. That little bit of extra boost is just insane. So what I'm gonna do now is lower the pressure in the rear and we should be able to send this thing a lot harder, which I'm pumped about. More speed and a lot more control and fun because um, actually I kind of like that I started off at stock power because that really helped me learn the chassis. And now after I've done a couple laps with uh, the boost at one bar, it actually feels so freaking good um, and I can now just upscale that and continue to keep driving it with what I am comfortable and used to now. For some crazy reason, Fusto is throwing me the keys to his missile. How much power does this make? 450. 450. Far out. Pop the hood. Let's have a look at what's in here. It's so, small turbo. Small turbo. Nice, Garrett. Some, uh, 3071. 3071 R. Gen 2. Gen 2. Yeah. Nice, dude. Have inside the cooler, the shape yep. shorter, 1.4 boost. Have fucking huge injectors. Yep. Uh, 1,200 cc. Okay. Have tow me cams, six volt manifold. Oh, nice. So Australian parts. Suspension. DG5 yeah. suspension. And the same, uh, the same knuckles you put on my car too. Knuckles, yeah, same setup. Cool. So this thing's just got like 200 more horsepower than mine. <laughs> yeah. This is like a, a pretty, a pretty like decent Jay Z, like one Jay Z setup, right? Yeah, that's the master you can get for a stock one J. So everything is stock, piston, rods. Yeah. The bearings, everything is stock. So if you put more pound, this you're gonna break very. Easily. You're gonna break it very so easily. This is a safe line. Yeah, looks cool though, man. All right, let's uh, let's send it and hopefully don't crash it. <laughs> <laughs>
feel comfortable sending his uh his practice car. So that was a pretty cool experience. Thank you so much, Fastor, for letting me take your practice car out. Um, definitely feels entirely different in my car. I'm not just talking about power. I'm talking about like alignment and how the steering feels, how quickly the car wants to flick into angle. His actually felt a lot more similar to my S15 than this thing. Um, so we're gonna uh, align the, this later on for the next trip and stuff and get it to feel the same way. Uh, we didn't actually do like a perfect alignment on this. We kind of just eyeballed it um, just due to time constraints and stuff like that. We didn't have time to get all the uh, alignment gear out and whatnot. But anyways, I'm gonna jump back in this thing, do a few more laps and then we're gonna go uh, to the restaurant and have lunch. Today's lunch choice is a beef curry with some melon soda. The uh, lunch of drifters? I don't know. <laughs> Just finished lunch and I figured I haven't been on Toge course yet and I definitely want to make sure I drive this before today ends. We've still got about two hours left in today before we need to wrap things up and the track closes. So let's jump on Toge, have a bit of fun and uh, not go into the embankment. <laughs> I love this track so much. Let's get the GoPro rolling. You guys will probably see why. I knew on one of the corners coming down the hill, I did hear a bit of a boom. And uh, we did do our first bit of real damage to the wheels, which is okay. It's a missile. It's what you need to sign up for. But man, ah, we're gonna go out and shred the rest of these tires. There's still a fair bit left on them. Now that I uh, got a bit more boost and I can run these at lower pressures, they last a lot longer, which is exactly what I wanted. So uh, we'll probably be able to only go through like one and a half, two pairs of tire, two pairs every, um, every time we're out here driving but this is car shop k style otherwise known as uh team orange's shop here at ebisu circuit and before we were looking at uh we were watching one of their drift taxis shredding around taking some people around up at north course but one thing i love about this is see if uh, there's anything in the way but you get a really good view of the other tracks from up here because the whole of ebisu circuit is built on this mountain range right there it is. Get a really good view of Higashi from here. Looks like they'd, uh, they got some bikes out today renting, uh, yeah, like a, a bike event. Looks like they're about to do a race. But yeah, really good view, especially at nighttime from Mitsuri, you can come here and watch all the guys doing massive mungies down through here and out through and whatnot. It's, it's a really good place to just chill.
up a sweat. Woo! Pretty successful few runs there and uh, tires are spent. So time to go get the jack and everything. We'll change these out. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit sad about that. I wonder if I can get like a, a, a fluoro neon kind of colored nail polish and I can just touch that up on. I mean, I don't care because it's a drift car, right? But at the end of the day, it's just like, uh, I kind of want that fixed. Nah, it's fine, it's a missile. <laughs> Just got some fresh rubber on the car, so we're gonna go shred for the last 20 or 30 minutes left before uh, North Course is closed for today. But I wanted to show you guys this rig. This is pretty cool. So uh, this is the guy that was driving the 8.6 today, and uh, this is what he use, uses as a loader to get his car here. So it's like a, a special rig and the crane and stuff, and it swings over the car and like a rope ties down on each wheel, and then he lifts the whole thing up and just sits it on the back tray. I think that's pretty cool. I've actually seen this a fair few times now um, with uh, a lot of people that bring their cars to the track in Japan because the loader trucks, the mechanism with the sliding uh, tray and everything is super expensive. Um, for instance, at the auctions, you could probably get one for about 20 grand, but one of these are like three, four, five grand. So as long as you got the know-how and the kit to do it, why not, right? I think it's awesome. And I mean, let's be honest, the A86 doesn't really weigh that much, so it's pretty cool. And up she goes. <laughs> so good. I guess the, I mean, I don't know if you want to be this sketchy, but if you needed to change the transmission on the fast, you could just hold that up on the crane and switch it out. Definitely not the safest thing in the world, but you could do it. So cool. All right, we're running out of time. Let's go in the... Uh, Get some seat time.
bit confused. It thinks it's a hot, it's a Subaru. Look at all this vapor. packed up ready to go time to head home well we're not gonna head home actually uh, we're gonna hang around here for the next hour and a half or so um, I'm gonna wait till it gets a lot darker and I want to take some cool photos of my DSLR and the JZX but uh, check out this this is actually north course is probably the nicest tunnel the Higashi tunnel that's the death tunnel here so I'll show you that when I get there because we got to go to Higashi that's where our uh, fast shop is but uh, you gotta be careful with these because um, during Matsuri and like when it's super busy you have to like flash your lights or beep your horn or rev your car up so that people know that you're in there and coming out otherwise it's one way so often quite often you get stuck in there with another car and you gotta reverse out and it's not a fun time might be hard to tell but it is actually getting pretty dark out here right now and I've been getting some pictures of the JZX100 up the top here at North Course. We've got about 45 minutes before they close the gate, so I'm hoping in the next 10-15 minutes or so, the sun will go a lot further down and we can get some really cool long exposure shots of the car. It's pretty creepy coming down from North Course when it's getting dark like this. The camera low light capabilities are really good. It's totally way darker in person than it is on the camera screen, go figure. Camel. Hey buddy, do you like drifting? Want to go for a ride? <laughs> I feel like he's the kind of guy that take me for a ride if you know what I'm saying. So when Higashi is closed they open this gate here so you can just drive straight over to the track into the car park but I really want to show you guys the death tunnel. This place is, yeah, there's a reason why they open that up because it's way easier than trying to go through here. It's way like, I feel like it's narrower and just like way steeper as well. Yeah, look at this thing. <laughs> at least the headlights on this thing are really good. Like we are right there, like both sides. I could pretty much scrape my mirrors or wheels on this. And then here's the steep part, which is where I broke so many of my bumpers on my 33.4. Luckily, the JZX is FEC spec, so we don't have any issues. Well, guys, this is where we're leaving the JZX 100. This is our Fostol's uh, shed and storage here at FEC circuit. I am so happy with this purchase. I think we made the right decision. Oop, got to get used to that. It's not like a Nissan. 
This way? That way. There we go. Checking everything's all locked up. But yeah, this is where she's going to live until I uh, come back again next month. Um, my goal at this point is, as I said, three days every month minimum. Um, but I do want to try and come here twice a month um, for three or two days consecutively. I just think it's going to be so beneficial for seat time and practice. But yeah, that's it guys. The chaser is going to sleep. And now we get to drive the car that started it all for us, the 33.4. Hopefully she's not too mad at me for uh, not driving her at all this weekend. But uh, as you guys know, she's a little bit hurt. Got some on piston rings and stuff, so I've kind of just taken some ignition timing out of the tune and turned the boost down a bit so that uh, she's just a nice reliable daily at the moment. We'll make it great again, guys, don't worry. And uh, I can't wait to actually rebuild this whole thing. It's gonna be sick. Anyways. Let's head home. Well, to the hotel. Relaxing in the hotel lobby right now, waiting for a video to upload. And I wanted to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about my thought process with the Chaser and my plans and whatnot with it. Because I'm sure there are some, some of you guys that are going, Sam, why'd you buy another drift car? <laughs> um, and I guess the whole reasoning behind it is, I love EBC Circuit. It's such an amazing tool for someone who wants to become a professional drifter, wants to get way better at driving. Um, five different tracks there that you can drift on. You can just smash it all day, alternate between the tracks and get amazing seat time, valuable seat time and learn very quickly. So with that in mind, I, I love ABC Circuit and I wanna keep coming here and driving and spending like three days every month here, but driving my own drift car to the track and then back home means that I'm subconsciously always thinking in my head, I can't send this too hard because if I do and I crash and make a mistake, how the hell am I getting home? So with that in mind, um, obviously the drift missile practice car idea popped in my head and I wanted to focus on that because for me to really use ABC circuit to its full potential, I need a car that I'm not afraid to send that's not gonna affect my way home. So. That's why we got the chaser. Uh, the, the, uh, the best thing about it as well, uh, this weekend that I've noticed is, it's cheap to have a chaser. I literally only went through, uh, what, two and a half pairs of tires, and they're cheap tires too, and only two three fives, they're like 40 bucks a pop. Um, and I only used one tank of gas for the full two days. Like that's cheap running costs for drifting, which is an expensive hobby nonetheless, but still that is cheap. And then you also got to think about, I mean, how much does it cost you at ABC Circuit for the full day? And how frequently are you coming? If you were just coming here once in a, in a while, you know, paying the ticket at the gate for just all five courses is about $70. Um, but, if you get the gold card, you can go down to the office and get a gold card, which is like a yearly membership. You get that in four, four trips or so, it's already paid itself off. And the rest of the year is free for you. So if you're actually coming here um, every month, then it makes sense. But anyways, that aside, it just makes a lot more sense for me for improving my driving, for just getting a whole bunch more seat time and yeah, I don't know. Kind of ranting on now, but I'm sure you understand where I'm coming from. That's my plans with the Chaser. Um, it's gonna be stored at Ebisu Circuit for me. So whenever I'm up here, I get the keys, go drift it, slay, and then when I'm done, park it back up. So it's very convenient, I guess. But anyways, that aside guys, let me know in the comment section if you're hyped for more Chaser content in the future. Um, I'm trying to plan the next trip when it's gonna be next month. Um, but uh, yeah, we got Okajuku in like two days as well. So I gotta, when I, the moment I get home, I gotta prep the S15 and get tires sorted and stuff. So <sighs> never stops. Thanks for watching guys. Smash that like button, write us a comment and subscribe. Um, and I'll see you all in tomorrow's video. But before you go, if you aren't following me on Instagram or Twitter yet, make sure you do. Um, I'm ahead on videos. So if you want any like behind the scenes or you want sneak peeks of what's coming uh, in the video tomorrow, make sure you're following me on those platforms. See you later guys. Peace out. Ciao.